So I'm going to talk a little bit about making homemade developers. Why would you want to do this? A lot of developers are not commercially available anymore, so you have to buy the raw components here, the uh, chemicals, and then mix them yourself. The other reason is, is that it's just fun, it's enjoyable, it's another exploring another aspect of photography. I like to mix my developers myself just because I also like to have them be fresh and not have oxidized or sat and gone bad, so I like to mix them up at the very time right before I develop my film so that I can get the best quality out of the developer possible. So I'm going to go through some of the developers and, and just the basic premise behind development. There's a lot of information about developing online. Um, this book here, The Darkroom Cookbook by Stephen Ansel, is a wonderful source. Uh, this is the second edition, which I actually like more than I think they're at the third edition now, but both of them are excellent, and it goes over a lot of the, basically, it has formulas in here and the chemicals and how they're mixed and so forth, so that if you're interested in that, you can look up The Darkroom Cookbook. So, what is in a developer? The first thing is a developer has a preservative in it. The preservative um, helps with, it just helps the, the developer last. Um, it does add some alkalinity to it in um, large quantities, so that could also have an effect on the developer. But its main purpose is, is to um, preserve the developer so that it will last and not oxidize. And that's, like I said, most universally sodium sulfite. So the second component that you have is the developing agents themselves. Um, the developing agents, um, there's a lot of them out there, so I encourage you to look them up. Um, there's phenidone, which is a low-contrast developing agent, along with metol, which is another low-contrast developing agent. There is um, hydroquinone here, which I've taken out and put in a ball jar, which is, I think, a pretty good method for storing it. So hydroquinone is a high contrast developing agent and then you have vitamin C and sodium acerbate which is basically a buffered version of vitamin C so the uh, it's not as acidic. Um, together when you combine most developers are what we call MQ or PQ developers which are metal hydroquinone or phenidone hydroquinone. Phenidone and metol give about the same results. The only difference is that some people are slightly allergic to metol and phenidone is a little bit more environmental, environmentally friendly and or um, just non-allergenic. So when you mix, um, usually with the MQ and PQ developers, when you have um, the two in there, metol and hydroquinone or phenidone and hydroquinone, this makes what's called a super additive. And the way I explain how a super additive works is that, you know, normally, hypothetically speaking, one plus one equals two, but when you combine metol and hydroquinone or phenidone and hydroquinone and make a, a super additive, one plus one equals three, basically meaning that you have a much more active developing, uh, a developing agents in there and the two work in conjunction to really bring out even more activity in the developer through the development agent side. Now, we also have um, your accelerators. Your accelerators are, basically they add sufficient alkalinity to the developer to make it active so that the developing agents will begin working on reducing the silver halide crystals on your film. Um, well, the exposed silver halide crystals. We don't want the unexposed ones to develop and we're gonna get to the restrainer in a second. So, in terms of your accelerators, you have, um, so, or borax, in terms of this is, I'm giving them an order of how alkaline they are from least to greatest. So you have borax, which is a mild alkalinity, and then you have sodium, um, sodium metaborate, which is a medium alkalinity. Sodium carbonate, this is actually from a pool supply store. I find that pool supply stores can give you pretty good um, um, chemicals for alkalinity, for controlling the alkalinity. So sodium carbonate, and then sodium hydroxide, which I rarely use, but it is it is a uh, accelerator in certain formulas. You have to be careful with all of these chemicals. Um, sodium hydroxide is exothermic, which means that it gives off a, a lot of heat once water is added to it. So you never really want to add, or I should say, you never want to add chemical or water 
to chemical because it could uh, cause a reaction that may uh, you know splash up on you and so forth. Um, I rarely use sodium hydroxide but I do have some just in case I need it for pyro developers and stuff. Pyro, pyrogallic acid, these are other developing agents. Um, there's a lot of them, amidol and so forth, I, so I don't have them all here. Um, but again, you can look a lot of these up in either in printed form or online. So um, going back to that, make sure you read all of the safety precautions on all of the chemicals before you use them. Uh, pyro is a particularly bad one, amidol, so forth. So just read up on their safety precautions of all the chemicals. But basically these are all safe. Um, I have them when I not using them, I have them stored away in a safe place so you know people can't get to them and animals and children and so forth. But just read the safety precautions so that you know how to handle them. Um, also, if you're on a septic system, um, I caution you against putting these down the uh, down down the drain because they could be pretty bad on your septic system. Um, I'm not, you know, you should dispose of all chemicals in an orderly um, and an environmentally friendly fashion, but these are all pretty decent chemicals for the environment. They're not terrible. Hydroquinone is a little bit bad, but just look into the disposal methods for all of these. Now on accelerators, you can actually get um, stuff from the the uh, grocery store too. This is Super Arm & Hammer washing soda which is almost pure sodium carbonate. So that's one method. And 20 Mule Team Borax is also available at the grocery store and that's almost pure borax. Um, they do have some fragrances in them but these don't affect um, chemical develop or film development or anything so you'll just have a, a nice bouquet in your developer once you mix it. So moving on to the restrainer then the restrainer is the, um, basically how this works is when you develop film, it's, it's putting energy into the, the film and it's going to develop or reduce out the silver halide crystals that have been exposed by adding chemical energy to them. Um, but the problem with that is that when you have a film that, like, silver that hasn't been exposed to light, we don't want that to develop. And so sometimes if you have a very active developer, you can get what we call, call crossover development, where some silver halide crystals that haven't been exposed actually are developed. And this basically, i.e., causes greater base fog. Uh, base fog can be printed through when you develop film, and it won't show up. But when you make a paper developer, you almost well universally you need a restrainer in there because we don't want our paper base to get fogged from chemical development so we normally put a restrainer in and that restrainer is oftentimes potassium bromide or benzo -tri triazole and I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right I think it's benzo benzo triazole um, so somebody can correct me if I'm wrong there in the comment section but um, these are the universal restrainers. <clears throat> now, when I mix a developer, there's there's a, a sort of school of thought about restrainers, uh, film developers in particular. If you have a film developer that's creating so much base fog that it's it's creating a problem, then usually what's recommended is that you. I don't use restrainers hardly in all of any of my develop in film developers. Um, the school of thought there is is that if you have a developer that's so active that you need to put a restrainer in it, then you really need to tone down um, the accelerator portion of your uh, developer because you're just getting too, it's too active of a developer. So now that, that there is one exception there when you mix up pyro developers and so forth, um, you use uh, sodium hydroxide a lot or potassium hydroxide and these are very active so then you almost always have to put a restrainer in. So when I actually mix the chemicals, I, or measure them out, I put them into small 35 millimeter canisters here that I use. And these, these are good for storing, and then I put the caps on. Again, I mix the, uh, the chemicals pretty much right before I develop my film. So I'll, I'll, I'll put my film in the tank, I'll go down, I'll get all my chemicals, and I'll measure them out, and then I'll bring them upstairs and mix them. Um, right before I develop the film. So I use 35 millimeter film canisters to store it in. And then if I have to, uh, sometimes sodium sulfite calls for a large quantity in, in a developer. So I'll, I'll get a little 
pill bottle or something like an empty bottle that's that's a little bit larger I use small um, you know plastic measuring spoons I try not to use metal in case it reacts with any of the chemicals so I use these small plastic they're basically uh, measuring spoons and then I have a gram scale here this gram scale is, is one I just bought offline it costs about thirty six dollars it um, it has a Here it has a weight so that I can calibrate it, a calibration weight, which I think is important. And then it is just a small gram scale that measures down to the one, uh, one one hundredth of a gram. And I think that that's important because we want to get it as close as possible. Some of these developers um, that you'll find to mix have the, uh, the grams down to you know 6.2 grams or something and so we want to get that as accurate as possible so a quality a quality gram scale is important but don't overpay for one just get a, a good one that is reliable and so um, these are the developing chemicals that I use um, pretty much primarily I have used pyro uh, pyro catechol pyro gallic acid in the past uh, glycine there's a lot of different developing agents out there so or developing chemicals not just agents but uh, preservatives restrainers um, accelerators and developing agents so look into those um, one developer that I use a lot now is um, I think I'm pronouncing it properly the Butler formula but I actually put a which is not a commercially devel um, available developer anymore I think there was one, or maybe there still is one, called Neofine Blue, which was basically the Butler formula. But I add a, I don't make a stock solution, because like I said, when you read about it, it'll talk about making a stock solution. I don't actually make a stock solution, because like I said, I, I mix them right when I use them, so that they don't oxidize or go bad, so they're completely fresh. I actually add, I call it my Butler with vitamin C, or sodium acerbate, I add a little sodium acerbate which acts sort of like a high contrast developing agent in place of hydroquinone. Um, so I, I like that. Vitamin C will work for that also, but um, I like sodium acerbate because it's buffered um, with um, borax and it's not, or I'm sorry, not borax, but sodium bicarbonate so, uh, to reduce the acidity of it, which then it, the acidity won't affect the developer because a developer needs to be in, in an alkaline environment. So this is the basics of what you'll need to make your own homemade developers. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. But I think that I've covered most of the basis, and I hope that uh, this will help get you started in your own endeavors to mix and start using your own homemade developers.